Okay, this is the second part of our Unit 1 seminar on exponent laws. This next example is going to be essential for the test. There will definitely be um, something that is similar to this question on the test. Whenever you have a question like this, you'll be able to identify it by, first of all, the fact that it is a quotient. We have a, the numerator and the denominator, as well as the fact that all of the bases are the same. So whenever you have a question like this, you have to focus on the largest negative power so for this particular example the largest negative power is going to be 3 to the power of negative 5 and this is going to be my greatest common factor So what we're going to have to do is to factor 3 to the power of negative 5 out of both the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to take 3 to the power of negative 5 outside and now I have to ask myself how to translate the other term. So first of all, what is 3 to the power of negative 3 divided by 3 to the power of negative 5? Because I'm dividing each term by 3 to the power of negative 5. So if we keep the base the same and subtract the exponent, then negative 3 minus 5 is going to be the same as 3 to the power of positive 2. So that's what I'm going to replace. Instead of 3 to the power of negative 3, that translates to 3 to the power of positive 2. We're going to do the same thing with 3 to the power of negative 4. 3 to the power of negative 4 divided by 3 to the power of negative 5. Keep the base the same and subtract the exponent. That's going to give me a final answer of 3 to the power of positive 1, which we are going to replace with 3 to the power of negative 4. Now, 3 to the power of negative 5 divided by 3 to the power of negative 5, any number divided by itself is equal to 1. The next step is very important because I'm going to cancel my greatest common factor. Those two numbers cancel each other out. So we're left with 3 squared plus 3 to the power of 1 all over 1. That gives me a final answer of 9 plus 3, which gives me an answer of 12. Now the next example is going to be similar. However, we're going to have a binomial in both the top and the bottom. Plus 3 to the power of negative 3 all over 3 to the power of negative 2 minus 3 to the power of negative 3. So for this particular question, remember we're focusing on the largest negative exponent. largest negative power, which is also equivalent to my greatest common factor, is equal to 3 to the power of negative 3. So that is what I'm going to take out of both the numerator and the denominator, 3 to the power of negative 3. 
when I do that, I know that the second term of each binomial, 3 to the power of negative 3 divided by 3 to the power of negative 3, for both of these numbers, my answer is going to be 1. But I have to figure out what is 3 to the power of negative 2 divided by 3 to the power of negative 3. In order to do that, we have to keep the base the same and subtract my exponents, minus 2, minus negative 3. That is equivalent to 3 to the power of negative 2 plus 3, which is the same as 3 to the power of 1. So that is going to be my first term for each of my binomials. The numerator, the two terms are separated by an addition sign, and in the denominator, the two terms are separated by a subtraction sign. Now the two, the most important step with these questions, to remember that the greatest common factor cancels each other out. That's what makes the question look a lot more complicated than it actually is. So when I cancel my greatest common factor out, I'm left with 3 to the power of 1, which is 3, plus 1, all over 3 to the power of 1, which is 3 again, minus 1, which gives me a final answer of 4 over 2, which simplifies to positive 2. So those are the final questions in, I believe, assignment, in the last assignment that we discussed. Now we're going to move on to a new topic and focus on rational exponents. Now whenever you saw the radical sign in the past, in grade 9 and 10, you usually only referred to it as the square root sign. But because we're no longer just dealing with square roots, now we're also talking about cubed roots, fourth roots, fifth roots. We are going to refer to rational exponents or the radical sign as uh, no longer the square root sign, but the term radical. So the formula is a to the power of 1 over n. That is a rational exponent because the exponent is in the form of a fraction. We can translate this it's going to be equal to n radical, so no longer the square root sign, but it's n radical a. Now when you have a term in both the numerator and denominator, it's going to be a little bit different. So if I have a to the power of m over n, we can rewrite this with a inside the radical sign. My index is going to go inside my radical, and the numerator refers to the power on the outside. So a is the radicand, so your base, whatever your base is, goes inside the radical. N is the index that refers to whether we have uh, or what type of root we have. So we could have a square root, where in that case the index would be 2. We could have a cubed root. We could have a fourth root, fifth root, and it goes on and on. Now the expression N root a to the power of m, or just n root a to the power of 1, these are all referred to as radical expressions. So let's work through some examples with radical exponents. 